You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, which can be found on our website at treyerwilderness.com and also on iTunes. Welcome to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where we are homesteading traditionally 100% off-grid today and offering preparedness and survival tips for tomorrow. Here's your host, Tammy Treyer. Welcome, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today on Mountain Woman Radio. Hope you all are enjoying your summer and your gardens are bountiful and you are just enjoying your family time and this beautiful weather. We've had such ups and down weather as far as the temperature goes, but it's been beautiful and I will never complain about sunshine. So it's been wonderful here. I have a great guest on today and I'm excited to introduce her. She is another like-minded person here and another homesteader at heart and and, uh, has so many neat things going on on her homestead that I would like to share with you today. Her name is Amy Fuel and you can find her at thefuelhomestead.com and uh, that is F E-W-E-L-L is how you spell her last name. So it's thefuelhomestead.com. And Amy, thank you so very much for joining me today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's always nice to have like-minded folks on here, and everybody has a little different niche and a different way of doing things and and different stories. So I figured I would give you the floor and just allow you to share a little bit about yourself, how you got started, and... and um, We'll go from there. Awesome. Um, Let's see. Um, Growing up, my grandfather actually had a farm, um, and he still has a farm even to this day, and it's funny because my son actually loves going there just like I loved going there when I was a kid. (laughs) Um, But our homestead journey didn't really start until my son was born. Um, You know, my husband and I weren't really that healthy, and... Here we were with a child, and, you know, we wanted to raise him in a way that was natural, and he didn't have to hopefully rely on doctors for everything and the food system and all that. So we had tossed around the idea for the first couple years of his life about, you know, raising our own, growing our own food, raising our own animals, Um, but it wasn't until he was probably about two and a half or three um, so we, we're, we're newer homesteaders, maybe not at heart, but mm-hmm. physically and literally we're, we're new homesteaders. Um, and it just kind of happened off the whim. My husband said, he looked at me, we were driving down the road one day, and he's like, you know what, let's get chickens. <laughs> and I thought, really, you know? <laughs> like, I honestly, I actually didn't want chickens. I didn't want the responsibility of it. <laughs> and uh, he's like, no, come on, let's, let's get chickens. And so, man, he went big. It was like, go big or go home. <laughs> and he built this huge chicken coop. It's like this, it's like a shed, basically. <laughs> Um, I told him it's like the size of our son's bedroom, but whatever it took, you know, he, he did it. He was on the go and he built it in a weekend. And so we had chickens before the coop was even built. (laughs) Um, so chickens were our gateway animal into homesteading. Um, we discovered, you know, new, new and exciting foods you know we my husband the 10 years that we've been married I I've never seen him eat a salad until recently I mean (laughs) you know we went all these years with him just eating meat and potatoes basically (laughs) and now in the past few years he's eating healthier we've both lost weight just from eating naturally Um, our son is learning about organic living and and eating naturally and yeah the best thing is that he can he can tell the difference, you know, between what's good for him and what's bad for him. Yep. So that's how we got started in homesteading. We now raise, um, we have meat rabbits, which, which our breed are Rex rabbits. Okay. Um, we did 
we were raising ducks for eggs and meat, and then um, we also, the newest addition to our homestead is quail, which has been quite an adventure, um, which we also use them for eggs and meat as well. Um, My husband actually, he isn't, he was the one who started all this, but (laughs) he doesn't, he's really not that involved um, because he's working all of the time. And um, so it's mostly me just doing everything. Granted, we don't have, you know, like cattle or anything big like that. Otherwise, I'm sure he would help. But I enjoy I enjoy doing it myself. Um, and my son does help me, too. And um, it's just kind of my serenity time. It's like it's my downtime, and I enjoy it. And i um, very big on women being the farmers and the family. So that's, really cool. that's basically where we're at now. Okay, that's very cool. And and you know what? It is. I totally get what you're saying. It's like a little utopia being able to do these things. And and I totally agree with you with our men off working. You know, it comes back to the traditional ways uh, of living right. in that the women take care of things, the children, the the homestead while they're gone and and keep things going, put a good cooked meal on the table when they come home and you know, it, it to me, yeah. that's very gratifying. I love being yeah, in my I, kitchen. Yeah, I really enjoy it, too. I mean, I do. I work from home, yeah. so that's another bonus. You yeah. know, I work for a regional magazine here in Virginia, and so I'm able to work from home and homestead, which is awesome. And yeah. because I'm here all the time, it is more convenient for me to do it yeah. um, rather than him. So he just reaps the benefits. I always <laughs> joke all the time that he doesn't do any of the work, but he gets the benefits of it. So <laughs> I saw that in your About Us on your website website. I thought that was funny. And, and it's, it's a really good balance though. I mean, when you can find a balance like that, where you are gratified with what you're doing, you're happy, it's providing for your family and it's giving you the benefits of being healthy. Like you said, eating whole foods and that it, it, I, it's really good for the body. And it's amazing what people find when they start going off of the processed foods and eat naturally, you know, that your body will adjust. You do lose weight. You'd feel so much better. So it's, it's such a reward to be able to provide all that and and kudos to you for doing it by yourself. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, and the other thing that's great is like, you know, we, when we first started this journey, (laughs) maybe it wasn't great. It was kind of a a bad thing, but like when we would go out to eat, we would be like, Oh, you know, like this isn't, I can make this better at home, you know, or my stuff tastes better. And, yep. you know, my husband, sometimes he would just kind of look at his plate when we go out to eat and he's just kind of like, well, it's okay, but, <laughs> <laughs> yep. you know, so it, you really get to understand the quality of food and you appreciate that so much. And, yeah. and I feel like, you know, a lot of people don't understand that until they've experienced it. Yes. And I wish more people could experience it. And that's, that's, you know, one of the reasons why I started the Homestead blog. And um, I was a, a Christian blogger before under a different name, um, a blog name. And then I, I slowly found that it kind of all went hand in hand. I mean, mm-hmm. natural living and being a Christian do go hand in hand. And so mm-hmm. that's why I started our Homestead blog and page and it all kind of intertwines with each other. Yeah. Um, and it's just taking care of yourself and taking care of your body and then being a good steward of the, the earth at the same time. It's yeah. it's really enjoyable. And I wish more people could experience it, yeah. you know, experience it and see how much different they could be living and how great it is. We're not, we're not crazy people, you know, we're not just like, Oh, let's go play on a farm. It's, it's really for the benefit of us and our, and our children and the generations after us. I mean, you have to think like my generation, even though my grandparents were farmers, you know, even they have gotten roped into the different systematic issues in the food system. And, um, you know, we're, we've lost so many skills over the past century, basically, that it, it, it's mind-blowing to think if we ever had to fall back on them, we couldn't. There's no one here to teach us how to do it. And so, you know, we are trying to teach our son how to live off of the land if he ever had to. And even if he doesn't have to, if he wants to, he, it's not going to be a struggle for him right. to learn these things because he'll already be have it instilled into him. So. Yeah. Awesome. Very awesome. And well put. And I totally agree with you because with my illness, 
I cannot eat anything processed or my body flares. It's like my immune system is so hypersensitive that I can't eat our processed foods. The GMOs kill me. So, and we were already, you know, on a healthy diet and eating well, but it's amazing and like you said, when you go out to eat, like if we ever have to go out to eat, it's typical that we get sick for like three days because of the oils they use or whatever, you know, and it's, and people don't realize, like you said, until they actually go off of the foods completely that they actually see the difference. Yeah. You know, my husband being the bull rider has such sore joints and aches and pains and the foods that are on the market today, it just enhanced that where if you're eating naturally, you know, you're helping yourself. And, and I totally agree with you with the traditions and, and the skills that are being lost. And I think that's why at heart we, you and I, and many of the other bloggers are on our own little personal mission to help people to rekindle those things because of that. Because if we do ever need to rely on those things, there's going to be so many people in a world of hurt that don't have a clue or know how to do these things and when you have that in your arsenal and when you can teach your children and give your children a more wholesome upbringing it's just it's instilled in them you know just like you go into your grandparents farm you know that was something that ingrained so much in you and and like you said passing that down to your son him going there as well it's just such a it's such a great feeling to know that we're passing that on and to see them learning from it my son's 19 and he's just he's 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 gained so much and you know, you don't realize how much until you see it in action. And when you see them, you know, right. using their skills, it's just, it's so awing and so exciting to see them, you know, knowing and, and being interested in it. Yeah. Yeah. You, and you really appreciate, like you said, you don't know until you see them in action yeah. and you know, they're even, my son is only six and you know, there are things that he'll say to little friends, you know, at church or, you know, his cousins or something, and it's kind of like, oh, wow, you are listening, you know, <laughs> and you're only six, and you already know certain things, and, you know, you know what's good and bad, and, you know, like you said, you do feel sick sometimes after living this lifestyle when you go out to eat. We're coming off of that right now. It's funny you say that, because, you know, my husband and I looked at each other yesterday, we're like, oh, my gosh, we've eaten out too much. We've been dealing with a family, um, one of our family members has been in, the, in and out of the hospital, oh. and so... It's just quicker, you know, it's quicker to go and grab something to eat real quick, you know, while you're on the go, but then you so regret it later, and it's true. I mean, you know, our bodies have basically gotten, we've gotten so used to everything that's in food, and it's not just GMOs, it's Uh antibiotics and everything else, and and that's, you know, the second half of this journey for me, um, it hasn't been about animals or or food necessarily, it's been about holistic medicine. Um, and, you know, that's, that's really my biggest journey right now is, is studying holistic medicine and, you know, herbalism. And, you know, my son, he had asthma growing up. And it, thankfully, I mean, they say he outgrew it. But I would like to think I had some part in helping <laughs> him heal, um, you know, his, his lung lining. And he's completely outgrown it. And he's only six years old. And so, you know, that, that kind of started my journey into holistic care after the whole home thing started was his asthma and but it's not just that I mean it's it's everyday stuff like why do we rely so heavily on things like Tylenol and yeah. um, allergy medicines you know when there's there's stuff right in our own backyard that we can use and so yeah that's kind of been my next part of this home setting journey um, it started with like I said my son and then it started with our animals you know we we had bought some chickens from a friend or you know someone we thought we were friends with and they were infested in lice and oh, wow. I was like oh my gosh I didn't even know it until like two weeks later so I had a whole chicken coop full of lice basically and um you know I read this thing on the internet from a very you know highly regarded chicken keeper to like spray them down with seven dust and all this stuff and and I mean I almost ended up in the hospital myself from wow. all the chemicals that was in yeah. this stuff Yep. And at that point, I said no more. And so we started treating our animals holistically and found yep. incredible ways that it's just as effective as chemical treatments for yep. them, and in some cases, even more so. And so, you know, we treat our animals holistically. We treat ourselves holistically. Um, you know, it's not to say if something comes up, like I had a gash in my foot a couple of weeks ago from 
a pantry incident, basically, and I had to go get stitches, you yeah. know, and I, I looked at the doctor and I said, you know, I was thinking I could probably do this myself if I were at home, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he looked at me and his eyes got big, he's like, you must be one of those crazy wilderness people, <laughs> and I said, well... No, but, you know, there are simple things that I'm, I'm hopeful I might be able to do one day. But, yeah. Yeah. you know, it all comes along with the journey, I guess. But Very much so. Very much so. No, we're the wilderness. We're the crazy wilderness people. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's just... <laughs> But I totally hear you, hear you. We do the same. When I was 14, I got introduced into natural medicines. And with my journey right now, if it wouldn't be for natural medicines and, and natural healing, I wouldn't be progressing the way I am. And I am a true believer in that. And I, too, am going, I'm schooling right now to be certified in herbal medicines as well because there's so much around us. And, and for the same reasons, you know, we, there's... You look at the medications today, even the over the counter the stuff over the counter stuff, and it um has so many side effects and and you can do things naturally and i I'm a big believer that God put everything we need in our surroundings. we just need to learn how to use it and and absolutely and I'm so glad to hear you saying all that and also to have the passion that you do. I know you do a lot with herbal medicines and have a lot on your website on the herbals and it's it's great to be able to share that knowledge and and like you said, the chemicals and the things that are being used today are so so toxic and you know people don't realize when they inhale this stuff and even even the cleaning products in our house are so toxic. So it's it's yeah. something that we all need to kind of be a little proactive on and really be educated on and learn because we can help ourselves so much more than we realize. Yeah, and it, you know, it goes along back with the, the whole skills thing. You know, herbalism at one point was just, you know, natural, and now it's like so uncommon that people think it, you know, you don't talk about it. You don't talk about herbalism and yeah. you don't talk about holistic care. And people think you're abusing your child because you give them holistic medicine versus, yeah. you know, modern day treatments. And yeah. it, it's crazy to think that not that long ago, this is what, this was the only way. I mean, yeah. Yeah. penicillin isn't that old, you know, and then look at while it was basically a miracle drug back then. And I'm thankful for it to some degree. Yeah. As humans always do, we, we abuse things, you know, yep. even too much of a good thing can yep. be a bad thing. Yep. And so, you know, that's that's where we're reaping the repercussions now. It's it's all these super bugs that we've basically created because they're antibiotic resistant. And yep. it's because antibiotics are in everything now. Yep. And it's common sense. I mean, anybody who took high school science would know yep. that these things would happen, but it's, it's like it's not common yep. sense anymore. Nope. So it's yep. unfortunate, but... You know that's that's our biggest thing right now, and and hopefully, you know, I'm I'm like a sponge right now when it comes to herbalism. <laughs> I'm trying to learn everything I can yep. and share it with people. Yep. You know, to have as much as possible. Yep, totally agree. And I think that you were probably a huge asset to your son in his healing. Um, my son is autistic, and we did a lot with natural remedies and stuff. And it was just funny you saying how you know people think we're poisoning our children. They either think we're poisoning our children or they think we're practicing voodoo or something, you know, <laughs> right. but, but it's, but it's, it's, it's a quick heal where, you know, herbs can help something within a three day period where you may need to do, um, prednisones and cortisones and all those things for months to try to remedy something. They're not even sure what it is, you know? So I really, I really stand very strongly on the herbal side of things too. And I too am a sponge. I'm a sponge so much. It like makes my head spin sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I feel you on that one. I totally understand. <laughs> Well, I'm going to take a short break here so we can get some words from our sponsors in. And we are going to come back and talk some more with Amy because she has some other really cool things in the works. And I want you to know about them. So stay tuned. Are you a blogger or author struggling to keep up with the demands of your business? Are you also afraid to hire somebody on in fear of that inadequate person and the struggles that go along with it? Well, look no further. Contact Michelle of MDH dash services dot com for a reliable efficient and trustworthy virtual assistant offering editing manuscript editing blog post creation blog work 
administrative work, clerical work, social media sharing, and so much more. She's very organized, efficient, and she will always be a step ahead of you. Trust me. So contact Michelle of mdh-services.com and take your blog and writing to the next level. She will also allow you to free up your time so that you can use it where you need it most. Do you have a loved one, or are you suffering from celiac disease or a gluten intolerance? Trying to find that perfect flour? Whether you are baking cookies, flaky pie crusts, or baking breads from scratch, or you are looking for a quick cake from a package, look no further. Better Batter offers non-GMO gluten-free products with an assortment of packaged items as well as flour packaged in varying sizes, including their bulk sizes, perfect for those of you that are practicing your preparedness skills. Better Batter is not just another gluten-free flour. It's what you have been searching for. Visit betterbetter.org. Do you have your free digital subscription to Prepare Magazine yet? If not, then hurry over to preparemag.com and start getting each monthly issue sent directly to your inbox. It's easy. All you have to do is go to preparemag.com, enter your name and email address, and you're subscribed. Consider signing up for the premium membership for past issues and exclusive resources. You can even subscribe to the beautiful print version of Prepare Magazine. Visit preparemag.com and choose the option that's most valuable to you. Prepare Magazine, encouraging, empowering, and enriching your journey. Okay, we are back, and we are talking with Amy Fuel of thefuelhomestead.com. And for those of you that are new, that are jumping on listening, it is her last name is F E W E L L, thefuelhomestead.com. And Amy does all kinds of neat things on her homestead. She is a writer and a photographer, and she has some um, really neat things in the works right now. She has some books. In the works, and she also writes for uh, and blogs for Mother Earth News as well. And they can find you there pretty regularly, Amy. I try to. Um, the summer months are are harder because, as we all know, we're busier with gardening and stuff in the summer. Right. But um, yes, I do. I do try to post. Actually, thank you for reminding me because I've kind of neglected that the past <laughs> month. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to try to start making a schedule and organizing that more often soon. So yep, yeah, there's lots of stuff over there right now already so cool and and I totally hear you on the summer thing it's like summer summer on a homestead is like wildfire it starts and it's finished and oh my blinked I think you know (laughs) there's so much to do yeah it's crazy (laughs) it's crazy it's already almost July I was just talking to my grandma this morning she's like oh my goodness it's almost the end of June and I'm thinking no you know (laughs) it's gonna be fall soon and I haven't even gotten half the stuff accomplished that I wanted to so I know it's crazy (laughs) I hear you and I always say that here in Idaho we have warped warp time zone because you wake up and as soon as you wake up it's like you're starting all over again it's just goes so fast right they say as you get older it goes faster but I don't know I think it's just the warp time zone (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) but you do a lot of writing and you have the liberty of working from home as I do which is such a wonderful thing and to be able to pen a book is also a wonderful feeling and I would love for you to share a little bit about what you have up and coming awesome yeah I agree writing is like a passion of mine and (laughs) you know it's not something I went to school for or anything it's just kind of something life submerged me into I mean that's that's all I know is being in the media industry and so I guess naturally I dove into writing and um, I currently work for a, a regional magazine which taught me a lot and so now like you said we're going on to the whole book writing stage um I started writing um, an all-natural homestead rabbit book, and it's basically more toward the meat rabbit side, but it's tastefully done, no pun intended. (laughs) Um, It's, you know, it will have recipes and stuff, and and it will go through the process of, of, processing a rabbit, but not necessarily in gruesome, gory detail. Um, But more so, you know, it's going to be about how how to live naturally. You know, the certain options that you have to raise your meat rabbits, the certain breeds. You know, how do you select a rabbit? That You know, all these rabbit books, they're great, but they don't even go through the process of what should you look for in, you know, a good meat rabbit herd. Um, 
So a lot of stuff like that, how to feed them naturally, how to heal them naturally with whatever, ail, you know, is ailing them. Mm. Um, all herbal-based, holistic care, natural for a rabbit and having a meat herd. Um, so there's that, that book that I've been working on. And I am working on another book, which is um, more like a family cookbook coming up. Basically, that's... I'm still in outline stage with that, even though I've already started writing it. Um, but it was it's inspired by my grandma. I we actually came across um, an old generational, basically a composition notebook of her either or it's her great aunt or her grandmother. I can't remember. Nice. Um, and so the recipes, of course, back then were very simple and kind of bland, but they're still neat. Yes. Um, and then it gave me an idea. You know, family. All of my best family memories were around a table and it was home cooked food and that's when our families got together were for holidays and birthdays and celebrations and it was always at grandma's house yep. um, or always at you know a mountain retreat uh, not far from us and so I've been working on that it, it's more like a recipe and a storybook um, mm-hmm. memories holiday memories that we share throughout it um, and lots of good pictures and lots of good random recipes um, I'm even hoping to put like a little Shirley Temple recipe in there too that was one of my favorite memories with grandma mm-hmm. um, staying up late at night and <laughs> her making us little Shirley Temples but um, <laughs> so yeah those two things are in the works um, of course, they're not ready yet. I'm hoping to have a lot of stuff done before the end of the year, so okay. um, people can kind of check that out as it, it goes along. Awesome. Awesome. And a recommendation for you listeners would be to go to thefuelhomestead.com and sign up for Amy's newsletter. That way you'll be the first to know when her books are released. And, and you can also uh, be kept up to date on all the things she's got going on. And you're definitely going to want to go there anyway to scour her website. She's got a lot of great information and uh, will be definitely, I know, growing with her writing. So definitely go check that out. And I'm excited about your cookbook. I did one myself uh, with uh, our favorite recipes, but I totally agree with you in that my past memories too are at my grandmother's house and around the table. And it's just such a, food is a comfort and so is good company. So it's a great way to gather your recipes. And my son was really excited to have the cookbook so that he had all my, the recipes for his favorite foods at his fingertips. So. (laughs) Right. Yeah. And that was kind of our idea around it. You know, I've gathered recipes from even extended family, like grandma's sister who passed away long before, you know, I was even around and, and things that her kids remember too. And, and so it's, it's really like an extension of, of our family and, and everyone. And, um, you know, I had posted a little snippet on Instagram the other night and somebody commented under it saying, um, my favorite hashtag is food is love. And I was like, you know what? I'm stealing that hashtag. I'm, I'm using it for this book because it's so true. I mean, every loving, good memory, it, it, there was food somewhere in it. And I don't want to sound like a glutton or anything, but you know, that's what brought us together. And there was so much joy and happiness during those times. Um, so I, I love it. I'm excited to write it. And you know, as a writer, that's the best thing is being excited about writing something. Yes. And so it's, it's a lot of work ahead of me. Um, I don't, you know, expect it to be extremely long, but, um, you know, the, the bonus part is that it's kind of like people kind of get to journey with us and go through memories and, yep. and it's not just, you know, a cookbook, you know, we have so many cookbooks, even yep. though I love them, but it's really, you know, just, you get to kind of dive in and read about our family and our history and cooking um, from generations before my grandma, even up to our current generation. So I'm excited about it. Very awesome. And I'm thinking maybe when that is released, you'll need to come back on here so we can really give it a good release for you and let everybody know that it's now available. (laughs) Yes, I would love to. I would love to. I'm excited to see it and I haven't even finished it yet. (laughs) I know that's the best part of being the the new author is getting that in your hands and getting the cover on it and getting your ebook out there. It's just really exciting. I I I I'm glad you're getting to experience it because it's such an awesome feeling. And I am like you. I never went to school to be a writer. It was just something that was instilled in me, and just sort of submerged. And it's just such 
a passion. And it, like you said, it's just so yeah. nice to be able to write something that you're passionate about. And, it, you know, you said you have a lot of work ahead of you, but I'm sure you view it as I do. It's just fun getting it out of your head and onto the screen or onto paper because it's been bottled up for so long. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And I, I think we're the best type of writers. <laughs> no offense to anyone else because we, it is a passion. I mean, yeah. it, it comes out of you and I feel like we have a lot of emotion in our writing yeah. because it's what's inside of us and we have to get it out in some way. Yeah. Um, I posted a funny thing on Facebook, on my personal Facebook the other day. And my husband's always saying, like, if I have to text for him or something, you know, well, text in the way that I talk, not in the way you talk. <laughs> <laughs> and it's even in our daily, you know, questioning and talking, it's just. You know, yep. it's it's awesome. I, I, I like it. I like being real and raw with people. And yep. Um, yep. and I've always promised to be real and raw with people, so yep. I'm, I'm enjoying it. That's very funny. That's exactly how I am, you know. And, and, and I think that, that that builds a real trust with people because we're real and because we share all the nitty-gritty, you know. it, it, it make, We're no different than anybody else. It's just we're passionate about what we do and we enjoy sharing it. But we're no different, yep. you know. And I yeah, just, and that's one thing I've always promised my readers on my Homestead blog. I'm going to share with you my struggles and my successes because homesteading, any true homesteader knows that if something can fail, it probably will the first time. Yeah. And in and I've always vowed to share that with people because I don't want people coming into this new homestead lifestyle thinking, oh, it's going to be great and awesome. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that's not great and awesome that you have to deal with, you know, losing yeah. animals or something not going the way you thought it would. Yeah. And to know that other people have gone through that and have shared their real, raw, personal history with it, yeah. you know, it's, it's comforting. I know for me, for yeah. people that I read about, you know, yeah. it's nice for me to know I'm not a failure and that this is normal so yep. Yep. And, and to be able to learn from our mistakes too, you know, I mean, it, it, just as things break, we also have mistakes when we're trying to fabricate things or try a new process. So by sharing those processes, it saves people the trouble of doing, making the same mistakes. So I think it's very beneficial and, and I'm really excited that I had the chance to have you on here today. This was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. It's gone a lot quicker than I thought it would, but it's awesome. I like talking to you, and I love your show, too, so I'm excited. Well, thank you, and we will definitely have you back on here. We're running out of time, but I wanted to give you the floor again to just share maybe some words of wisdom or words of advice that's, you know, that come to mind for you. Yeah, probably um, speaking to the choir, which is myself, and that's one thing, you know, this year that we've learned is, um, you know, there are so many seasons, and even whether it's your homesteading journey or your personal journey, um, and welcome every single one of them because, you know, we have seasons of life that we're going through. Like for us, we, we started out big in homesteading, and it was awesome, but then we kind of found ourselves wearing out, and so now we're kind of in the seasons of, of being minimalistic and and just embracing it and simplifying life because I'm sure one day it'll get crazy again. But, um, you know, every season brings some kind of grace and mercy and amazingness in it. And so whether it's the season you want to be in or not, um, embrace it and enjoy it because something amazing is, is always around the corner and you have to have seasons for new life and new growth. So yes. that would be, that would be it for me because that's what I'm learning right now. So <laughs> Amazing. Very well put. Very amazing words. And it's very funny. We're on the same journey. I am, t I am on uh, doing the same thing right now. You know, if you can't enjoy the journey, we're missing out. And it's like you said, the valleys are what take us to the brighter side of yep. things. And we have to go through those valleys. So uh, my, my thoughts, too, on that is always looking up and trusting in him and letting him lead us through these valleys. There's always a lesson to be learned. And that's, that's, that was so well put. Thank you so very much for sharing that, Amy. <laughs> You're welcome. Like I've, one of my favorite quotes is, life isn't a destination. It's a journey. Yep. And it's on the journey to get to the destination. So yeah. yeah. Yep. You're very welcome. I'm, it's fun to be on the same path with you to, to find someone like-minded in so many ways. So. Yes. Yeah, this is really cool. Very cool. Well, thank you again for joining me. And everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to listen. And be sure to go over to thefuelhomestead.com and check Amy out and become one of her newsletter subscribers. And until our next show, everyone, take care and God bless. You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where you will learn something new every week. 
We hope you enjoyed the show and encourage you to join us at TreyerWilderness.com. And be sure to connect with us on iTunes. Remember, your reviews on iTunes are very important to us and help us reach more people just like you. 